I'm working a very complicated mess of a case involving a bunch of GIs from Fort Carson. And our shooting victim, Christopher Walton, is unconscious, in a coma, and near death. He can't tell us anything. But I've learned of a guy who can maybe tell us everything, a victim of assault where this whole thing began. We need to find out what the correlation between the initial assault was and the shooting of our victim, if there was any. According to EMTs, the recipient of that vicious first assault was Tyon Fleet. Like shooting victim Christopher Walton, Tyon is a soldier at Fort Carson. I'm glad you're feeling better. Thanks. Can you tell us what happened at the club? I can try. Um, basically, I went there with a bunch of other guys from our battalion, like we did a million times before. We used to frequent that place a lot. On Friday night, to be jumping, you know, um, a lot of females, nice DJ. So we was in there all, every chance we get. We was having a good time uh, for about an hour or so. And then we run into these guys from the other company that we've been feuding with for a while. Fleet is in an artillery group where they are charged with operating and firing field artillery. And the other group is a maintenance group responsible for the repair and maintenance of various types of Army equipment. It's not uncommon at Fort Carson for units to rival each other in performance and daily activity, the usual sorts of machismo nonsense that goes on among young men. But according to Dion, for a few of the soldiers, the rivalry between the units had turned personal. What up? I heard you been mouthing off, man. What's up? That's good. I've been mouthing off. Several months prior to the shooting, there had been some situation that involved two soldiers and a woman. Cat? Hey. Bad, bro. I ain't got nothing to be mad about, man. Is them? I got your girl at my house. Yeah, I heard about it. Calm I heard down, about Prince. It. Yeah. Calm down, Prince. Giving a hammer time. After you have a one-on-one -on -one personal dispute, you know, you come back and you bring it and it's, you share. It's always a group thing after that. Tyon says on the night of the shooting, the music, the women, and the free-flowing alcohol at La Jazz Affair provided the necessary spark to turn this long-simmering feud into a full-blown brawl. It just explodes into something out of control. I remember going out the door behind my buddy, with my hand on the shoulder. I got hit in the head. I was down, you know, it was really bad. I don't remember much else after that. You didn't actually see Walton get shot? No, I was knocked unconscious. I didn't see nobody get hit. While Tyon Fleet offers up little additional information about the shooting, he has supplied Kenda with one important piece of the puzzle, a possible motive. Fleet has provided something I didn't know. Maintenance hates artillery and vice versa. Christopher Walton, he's in maintenance and not in the other. Somebody in artillery is probably a man with a gun. All right, well, thanks for the info. Is there anyone else that was there that you think might be helpful to us? My girlfriend might know something. She was there, too. What's her name? Margie. Margie Adams. She wasn't involved directly into any fights or anything. You know, they just came to have a good time, and I guess we messed that up. <laughs> the next day, Kenda arranges a meeting with Margie Adams at a local coffee shop. Thank you for meeting with me. So what can you tell me about what happened at the club last night? Well, all hell broke loose in the club last night. It was terrifying. Margie tells me she becomes really frightened. She runs to get away from the gunfire. Did you happen to see who had the gun, or? Anyone get shot? No, but I heard about it. What do you mean? When I left the parking lot, I hid in an alley down the street, and these girls showed up. That was crazy. Oh my gosh, that was so scary. Did you hear that Derek busted a cap in somebody's Now that's a street expression. Busting a cap means firing a shot. Percussion cap on a round is what they're referring to, and the firing pin strikes it, causing the bullet to discharge from the barrel. You bust a cap. You said Derek busted a cap. Yeah. Who's Derek? Derek Mosley. 
I don't know much about him, except that he's in the army. She named somebody. Thank you. A name we haven't heard. Who is Derek Mosley, and what does he have to do, if anything, with this event? To find answers, Kenda heads back to the station to call the Army's Criminal Investigation Division. But as he walks in, he's hit with some terrible news. Lieutenant, I just got word from the hospital Walton didn't make it. When? Less than an hour. It was shocking. When Chris Watt passed, everybody was somber. I just know that our whole dynamic within our friendships of that group changed. It basically dissolved. This is a soldier who goes out to a bar to have a good time. Things get out of hand, guns come out, and his life is wasted. With Walton's death, the coroner can finally remove the slug that killed him, giving Kenda one last vital bit of evidence. When we finally get our hands on the fatal bullet, it is in fact fired from a 25 caliber semi-automatic pistol. The critical question is who among fleet's artillery unit carries a 25 automatic? And was he there that night? Hoping that Derek Mosley might just be that guy, Kenda finally makes a call to Fort Carson, where Mosley is stationed. Yes, hello, this is uh, Lieutenant Kenda, Colorado Springs Police Department. The Army has a Criminal Investigation Division, CID, which basically handles serious crime committed on the post or by active service members. I need to speak to a Derek Mosley in connection with the shooting in Colorado Springs. If we need an individual who's in the U.S. Army, they will produce him and physically provide him to us. An hour later, Derek Mosley is standing in our office. I think you have a seat right there, sir. So Derek Mosley, he's supporting himself on a cane. Interesting, he's a young guy. You know, why do you have a cane? I'm Lieutenant Kenda. Oh, nice to meet you, sir. Mind if I ask what happened to your leg? Got in a bit of a scuffle. A scuffle? Well, the maintenance unit and the artillery unit really don't get along that well. Let's just say my leg got caught in the middle. In my head, I'm thinking, now, Derek, that's an excellent reason to want to kill somebody. I'm liking your bad leg. Tell me a little bit about your Army life. What do you do? Uh, I've been enlisted for a couple of years now, and I work mainly with the maintenance unit. I mean, that's pretty much it. Christopher Walton's unit? Yes, sir. If we're right about this feud, he's not going to kill one of his own. His leg was broken by a member of the artillery unit. Walton is a member of his unit, the maintenance company. He would protect him, not hurt him. Kenda realizes that what Margie Adams heard in the alleyway about Derek is nothing more than a rumor. Rumors like that can take weeks away from an investigation that you chase and you chase and you chase and it evaporates into thin air. When I saw him get shot, it was literally the worst day of my life. So you were at the club? Yes, sir. Did you see who shot him? Yes, sir, it was a soldier from the artillery unit. He had a small silver gun. Oh, really? Well, now, Derek, you're getting more fun by the minute.